Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you your daily Tesla report for Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. Before I click through the charts, I just want you to click like, subscribe, share if you would, and check out wickedstocks.com where we offer a full suite of daily and weekly analytical videos just like the daily Tesla report, daily SPY report, daily Triple Q report, weekly analysis in the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, the long bond ETF, the TLT, and two individual stock picks a week. You never see on YouTube that that cover what I would call kind of the longer term swing trader to the near term investor. Anyway, let's jump to the weekly chart here uh, just to let you know, and you're probably already familiar with the idea and the fact that we did close last week above this channel structure. It's been a one to two month target following the testing of it about five or six weeks ago, 190.48. That is our support on the daily chart is at 193 even. I'll show that in a moment. But really bottom line is we are now anticipating possibly this week, this long-term channel top at 208.93. This area I've got deemed a five-star annual containment level, able to contain buying perhaps through the rest of the year. And from here, we can fall off through the rest of the year, perhaps. We don't have, I wouldn't have a target just yet, but that would come pretty quickly once we begin to fall back from 208.93, if we begin to fall back from 208.93. I will say that closing above 208.93 at the end of the week by a 1% margin, I'll give that number later in the week, would signal longer term bullish continuation. This 265.05 formation, this rising channel top into the 290s within a few months, I'm going to call a three to five month objective. It could be quicker, but I think three to five months given the fact that it's rising and this would be our next big picture objective that may well contain quarterly buying pressures when tested, two to three month highs when tested. And that's about as far as I'm going to go with that in terms of the upside. Now let's talk about the day itself. Uh, I'm going to just uh, show you that once again, we have 193 even as the channel top that I showed a moment ago in the weekly chart at 190.48. There's a lot going on in the lower 190s. And over the next couple of days, this new rising one-third speed line based in part on Tuesday's high, it is trend defining projected off that late April low. And it can absorb along with the lower 190s selling pressures for the week itself. I hate to throw, you know, a whole series of numbers at you that are over four points wide, but that's just the way it is. You can buy 193 even, solid support. You can also buy, if you're a longer term position trader, 19048. It's the same formation, but on the weekly chart. Now, um, once again, I'm going to go back to, that is the wrong chart to show you. It is this one, 188.71. Um, you know, we could close below 193 today. Uh, that would not, for me, be a clear sign of follow-through weakness. It actually would be below 188.71. But what I like about 188.71 is it is rising daily. As long as Tuesday's high of 204.48 remains good for the next day or two and we ease back into this zone, this 188.71 level actually converges into the lower 190s anyway over the next couple of days. So as we move into later week, it becomes convergent with all this stuff between 190.48 and 193 even. It is, in short, our downward pivot point, not only through the rest of the week, but even in the next week. A settlement today below 188.71, I don't see that happening, but if so, 170.56 then expected by the end of next week or sooner where we can bottom out on a weekly basis. And really, the way I see the, the one to three week time horizon shaping up is we've got solid support in the low 190s, anticipating that very long term channel top at 208.93, possibly this week. If we then close uh, below 188.71, then it is the 170.56 level. And that is our sort of one to three week downside target. I don't see revisiting, you know, the lower 150s to mid 140s unless we close below 170.56. Yes, there is a case to be made that if we settle back below 193 even, or I should say at the end of the week below the... Uh, 190.48 formation, we can give it all the way back, you know, into uh, the upper 140s, low 150s. But 
Um, you know, I'm not comfortable anticipating this 146.02 roughly channel bottom, 146.06 long-term Fibonacci level, unless we were to close below 170.56. So uh, that's it's pretty stair step on the way down. Closing below 188.71, three to five day swing traders can play the short side aggressively down to 170.56, where three to five day swing traders can liquidate and go long. And one to three week swing traders, longer term position traders can go long at 170. 7056, anticipating then perhaps 208.93, that long-term channel top. This long-term channel top at 208.93 is the big level through the rest of the year. We can top out at 208.93 through the rest of the year. If we test 208.93, say, on Wednesday and fall all the way back to close the week below 190.48, that, to me, would be a big setup for longer-term bearish continuation. And yes, I might then begin talking about this lower area as a viable one- to two-month objective once we test 208.93. But let's test 208.93 first. I think I've covered the downside pretty well. Once again, if we close below 188.71 and your time horizon is, is anywhere from three to five days to one to two weeks, I don't see a good reason to stay long under that time horizon because I would expect 170.56 by the end of next week if we settle today below 188.71. Until then, this market wants to test 208.93 and upside today, where are you? I need to look for this. No, that ain't it. There we are, 204.52. Now, this level we pushed through a bit on Tuesday. I think it was 202.20. We pushed through it, 204.52, just above, actually, Tuesday's high, can contain intraday strength. And if we push through 204.52, I think we'll likely today test 208.93. 208.93, once again, long-term descending channel top, able to contain annual buying pressures. You can make a very strong case for a long-term bear market still existing below 208.93. And once again, if we close above 208.93 on Friday, I'd like to see that by a 1% margin. Uh, I think we've got a good low for the year. If you're long any out of the money puts, I would suggest covering them and reach for, I'd say, 280, 300 out of the money calls that don't expire. I'd go six months out on that play, but we're not there yet. We need to close above 208.93. I don't think there's really anything else that needs to be said beyond what I already have. And uh, anything I do say beyond what I already have would be repetitious. I'm going to leave it alone for Wednesday's Tesla report. Please click like, uh, share, subscribe, check out wickedstocks.com. We offer a five day free trial on a subscription package that includes everything that we do on a daily and weekly basis. You have a great evening.